I've had a lot of you ask about my computer, what I use, what I have. So I've got some parts listed in my description. If you are planning on upgrading or buying new parts for your computer or accessories for it, I would appreciate if you use the links in my description. You don't even have to buy the product that is on the link. You could click the link and then search for a computer part that you already are planning on buying. And then your first cart purchase after clicking on one of those links, I'll get a percentage of. I would really appreciate that as it will support the channel's growth for the future. But anyways, here's a video. I'm going to show you how to generate and store electricity that has come with the most recent Rust update. So we're just going to build this as a little testing area. The first thing we will need is a large battery. We want to place this with the back side facing towards the area that we would like our cables to come out of and be easily accessible from. Now we will be able to have a input for our power we will generate and an output to use it for what we want. There are two ways to generate power with a windmill that you have to place outside in a four block radius on foundations and then solar panels, which you can either put on your roof or build a foundation away from your base and wire the cables to your base. There is only an output for each of these. So in our inventory, you'll see we have a red thing and we're going to be using that to wire them together. Here's what it costs to build the wind turbine and then also what it costs to build a large rechargeable battery. Everything else you can just kind of search by using the word electricity. If you want to try to wall this off, it's kind of a bad idea because it utilizes wind, which is a feature that was added in. I'm not sure when, but it's utilized by the hot air balloon as well. So we're going to put a quite a bit of these solar panels up on the roof and you'll see on the right side is our output and um, the power level of these is decided by the location of the sun and they are at an angle so if the sun is opposite of the angle that they are creating right here you see um, they, they will have a lower output so if we just change the time of day you'll see the shadows move and the dark side will either get no power or very little power so we're going to connect these together with these things, trying to make it look as neat as possible. We're going to grab our wiring tool and then click from each one. So the input is in the back and the output is on the front, your top or bottom, depending on if you put it on a wall or how I have it here. And you just wire it in like this and then take that and put it on the next one and then take the output and put it on the input of the next one Over here, we will connect our wind turbine and our solar panels together into one output with a combined power level. It does not lower the level of electricity that's flowing through these wires if you utilize this tool, which is called a root combiner. Let's just say this is all we wanted, which is quite a lot of power to be generated between these seven things. Next, we will put it through the floor and you can also just click on the floor and then go to your door since you can't no clip like me and then continue placing it where you would like After making your cords nice and tidy, you put it into the power in on the bottom selection. And now you can see we have power being generated and stored within our battery. We could add some more if we would like to have uh, excess amount of power or just to generate it faster, I guess. I'm not really sure. I was testing out adding more power here and then another time and it didn't really seem like it was 
generating power faster or i mean like storing it necessarily if anyone knows about that uh, leave a comment down below as to whether or not this actually makes it faster to store within the battery or whether or not we should uh, add another battery and separate these two selections of six things that we have here i mean obviously that would make it go faster but i'm more interested in knowing if it makes it faster for a single battery because these do cost quite a bit of high qual to make so your battery will keep a charge and build up a charge if you're not using it so here's the description of it if you want to try to figure out how to make it uh, store the power faster or you know what i mean whatever so you see we're adding some more up here just to test it again if it does make a difference it would have to be quite a lot more than what i did because what i did makes it made it look like it just went like maybe a fraction of a second faster so yeah over time it'll build up a charge and i was able to get it to like a very long time like 12 hours so it probably stores quite a bit so if you just turn it off when you're not using it which i'll show you how to do in a minute you will uh, build up quite a charge over time and then you'll see another way that you could place these solar panels down without leaving them on top of your base is building a foundation a little bit of ways away from your base and then wiring it to your battery Obviously you can't cover this up, but you could possibly put windows around it. I'm going to be looking into ways of potentially turning this into a little base that's protected in some way in the future. But they do take a lot of damage. I mean, you're not just going to be able to come over here and destroy every single one of these. You could destroy the cords to it, but the expensive part of this is, you know, pretty sturdy right here. So I mean, if anyone has any idea of how we could protect this but still allow light to pass through the object that is protecting it, let me know in the comments down below or join my Discord and send me some of your own videos or screenshots and I'll, if anything actually works, I'll uh, release a video shouting you out or we can uh, make a video together if that's something you're interested in because that would be something that a lot of people would be very interested in is a way to protect at least the solar panel part of this because the cord is, can be destroyed. If your solar panels do take damage, the output does depend on how much HP it has. So you see after repairing it, we get our charge back. And same thing goes for the wind turbine. So now that we have our source of power laid out, we'll need something to do with it. So I always recommend to put a on and off switch that's directly connected to your battery. And the way you do that is you just make a switch and wire this as neatly as possible. Gotta have that wire management to your switch. And then you'll be able to control whether or not your battery is charging or not. Turning it on will use the power, and turning it off will charge the battery, obviously. Now this is optional, but most of the time, especially if you're using a large battery, you're going to be using it to power a lot of random things. So a splitter would be the next option, and then you get three outputs from that. So you just connect the top of the switch to the top of the splitter. The top of the switch is the output. The top of the splitter is the input and then you will be able to control whether or not your battery is charging charging or not by turning the switch on and off. So you won't necessarily need to have as many solar panels as I do. Um, the real thing here is just time, letting uh, your battery charge over time and not using it immediately um, because as you can see it's been a few minutes and we've got 15 minutes of charge right now. You will probably only need a few solar panels or one wind turbine and then just, you know, let this thing charge up for half an hour, an hour, and you'll be good to go for a little bit when you're offline. Turn your switch off so that it's charging when you're not online. 
and over time you'll build up a charge so that when you do need it you'll have something there you know it's just about keeping on top of it and then uh, with the splitter you'll be able to use it for multiple things if you are only using this for one thing just use the switch and not the splitter you know what i mean the splitter is optional but that's all i got for you guys today if you go look down in my description you'll see i've got my computer parts and accessories listed now as amazon affiliate links so if you're trying to support the channel and upgrade or buy a new pc go check that out to support the channel and i'll catch you guys next time